So, to review, we've turned the bike on, we pulled the maxi fuse, we shut it off really quick, we unplugged the stock ECM. On 08 and 09, we've installed the adapter harness and the green wire. On the others, we just plugged it in. We turned the bike on. We did free, free air calibration on our O2 sensors. We've installed the O2 sensors in the pipe and we've ran our wires and we just checked the twist grip and the throttle body. We're all on the same page, right? All of that stuff really takes about 30 minutes at the most. Okay? After you do a few, it'll take you less than that. It really doesn't take very long. Okay? All right. So we're going to build a map. Open the, you would open the PC Link software, file, open file. If you've installed our software off the website, you're going to see a big list. We are constantly updating the website with instructions and software and everything else. So kind of stay in touch with the website every couple of weeks, you know, just to see what's out there. But it's almost irrelevant. The only thing you need to find is a map for a fly-by-wire application. Engine size doesn't matter. None of that. Because we've tried to make it as easy as possible for you to build your own base map. And here's how you do it. I'm just going to pick something. Open. And I get this screen. All right, what each one of these are. Closed loop AFR control mode. You'll see it's checked. We can put it in open loop if we want to. We do have some guys that, that use our ECMs as stock replacement ECMs. And they'll have a library of, of maps that they have. And if a customer has a bad ECM, he doesn't want to send it to the dealer, so he'll grab our ECM and sell it to him at a considerable discount. He'll put his base map in it, plug it into the bike, and turn off the closed loop. So now the guy's riding around in an open loop bike with an ECM. So um, I wouldn't recommend it unless you know that your map that you're putting in that thing is absolutely spot on. Because otherwise it has no idea what to do, right? So, hold off on that for now. Continuous barometric pressure update, automatic nominal IC mode, all that means is legal check. <laughs> Don't do anything with them. What we're doing is we're taking essentially what would be idle air control motor, which <coughs> technically doesn't have, but we're using all that and the map sensors and we're taking and continuously updating all of that stuff while we're riding. We're not just adjusting fuel. That's very important. Okay. So as we're adjusting fuel, we're also monitoring what what the what your IC motor would be doing. Uh, doesn't have one. Um, and then we're also constantly taking the manifold pressure readings. That's key because remember we talked about <coughs> speed density, right? So we're looking at manifold pressure and updating and 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 constantly changing the map not only in the alpha N environment because you're using manifold pressure to adjust timing but in the speed density and especially for turbo procharger guys that's very important on the speed density side because we're truly keeping track of everything that's going on engine load and all of that to keep the fuel dialed in perfect okay any questions all right brake override if a guy wants to hold his front brake do burnouts and he has ABS Click that. If you don't, you'll throw an ABS light. Okay. Estimated horsepower. This is where building the base map comes in pretty, it makes it really simple. Estimate your horsepower and you need to know what your injector size is. Damn, you just built a base map. That's really how our, our system is, is almost that simple. Okay. So, estimated horsepower, injector size, and you'll see it automatically <coughs> calculates base injector pulse width. Okay? With the exception of speed density, turbos. We'll get into that later. We may not even get into that in this one, but if you're, if you're we'll get into it because I know you're big into turbos, right? There's a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, there's other calculations. Those things get a little more complicated. So, um, we may save that for later, but we'll, we'll, get it. we'll touch on it anyway. Um, 
RP lim RPM limit, set it where you want it. Cranking revolutions. Um, automatic compression releases aren't always a great thing. And it really, it varies on the engine and the cam. If you've got a guy that's chosen a real late intake close on a cam, and he's running stock compression and he has automatic compression releases, crank sensor has a hard time figuring out what phase it's on. So I'm sure you've had the bike occasionally, you'll do a cam and you hit the starter and it's bang, 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 and then it'll fire. Okay, had that? Okay. The way a crank sensor works, it senses how slow the rear piston is moving on the compression stroke. It senses the change in compression stroke and exhaust stroke. And when it sees it slow down on the compression stroke, it recognizes bang. That's my phase. That's how it works. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. So, if, if you have, if you're... Lifters are lazy, all right, and, and have bled, and completely bled down. If you're not making very much cylinder pressure because of a late intake close on a cam and huge automatic compression releases, it can't sense the slowdown. So what the engine's got to do is crank over three, four, five times, rang, 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 to start building up cylinder pressure for the lifters to, you know, pump up and everything else for it to finally recognize phase and fire. Okay. We're dealing with that problem with cranking revolutions. Okay, the other issue: high compression engines without compression releases. When you hit the button and it's bang, bang starter bangs, and, and you're busting out ring gears and all this stuff going on, right? Because the crank sensor—it's such a wide variance in what it was designed to read versus what it is reading. I mean, if you're running 225 pounds of cylinder pressure and you hit the starter, the sensor freaks out. Okay, that's why, that's why they kick back on you occasionally. All right? In that case, we would increase the cranking revolutions. Zero, one, two, three. Make now, sense? What does it do? Cut the spark off for till it? it yeah, exactly. It allows it to spin on. Exactly. It takes it takes two revolutions for the for for the system to understand what's going on anyway. All right? That's where our cranking delay kicks in. So if you've got the, again high compression type set up and our real early intake close on a cam, you know, 232 or 236 duration, real short stuff, 34, 36, 38 degree intake closes. Yeah, when you start getting over about 190 to 200 PSI, then that's when you wanna start playing with that. Now, about the Gen 6 with automatic, what? Any question right there? I see, I'm sorry, who? Uh, yeah. Why do they have this? Why do they have that anyway? Why doesn't it just spark when it comes around? And why would they put that in there? To, I've, I've run into that before where um, they tuned it at a dealer and it automatically turned off the compression releases and he wasn't starting. Right. So why would they even have that? Why does it work that way yeah. as far as the crank sensor? Okay. In the beginning it didn't. We had cam sensors. Yeah. Remember? Well. Honestly, the crank, crank sensor technology improved quite a bit, and so did computer processor speeds. Okay, so if the, the only way to not have it is to have a cam sensor. So let's eliminate the cam sensor. Me, personally, I like the idea of a cam sensor. But um, if we look at the notches on the flywheel, we've got one space, right? That space, excuse me, that space gives us TDC. All the sensor needs to know is when it comes around, which TDC am I at? Is it exhaust or firing stroke? <coughs> and the only way it can know is to count the ticks, count the ticks. It knows how long it took on the ro rotation that it, the ticks it took longer. Bang. That's fire on the rear cylinder. So, okay. Any other questions on that? All right. You'll notice I have a value of one in there. If you put zero,